Hello, everyone. I'm Texas Warrior, and we're going to be playing uh, Shadow Mordor, specifically the Bright Lord DLC. Now, the reason that I chose this DLC is because it gets to show off a lot of the cool mechanics of the game that you don't get to see in the main game any percent, uh, since you don't get high enough level to really get those powers. So, we're just going to be jumping in here in three, two, one, jumping into this run. Go ahead and get in pretty quick here. With so, the loading screen. Yeah. Get a nice little uh, 35 seconds of loading screens. Uh, great way to start. Comfort, Comfort to me. Oh, <laughs> it's like home. Uh, just get to stare here at Calibrimbor's face and just uh, enjoy the view. I am a bright lord. Mash escape. Mash the button to skip the cutscene as soon as we possibly can. It ever loads. <laughs> there we go. So here we're gonna immediately use the power of the ring because it slows down time, makes it easier to, to hit them in the head, as well as it gives us infinite arrows. So uh, we're just gonna use that, pop some Uruk heads, and then go about our day. So we're just, there's four on the left, six on the right. We're gonna just click them all in the head. We're gonna jump over this wall, get the speed boost. And there's a little guy way over here. My crosshairs on him. And we're going to do a cool mechanic there called Shadow Branding. So Shadow Brand and Shadow Strike are two mechanics to traverse the game fairly quickly. Uh, Shadow Brand uh, teleports to them and knocks them to the ground. You can also Shadow Kill. And Shadow Branding, what we did there, turns them to our side and makes the Uruks become ours. So just brand them, make them become our helpful little boys. Now, I will say that um, the audio in this first part of the game, I don't know why it tends to mess up a lot for me. So it becomes really quiet for some awkward reason. And so, like, we're just, like, running around doing stuff, and half the sound for it is just not there. I still have not figured out why that is. But uh, we're going to race, done, get them set up, do a flurry strike attack to quickly knock them down and to get our combo meter for the uh, combat brand. Trying to get these guys done as fast as possible. Um, we did get some bad RNG spawns on this because the pathing is different on every single time through, making it where our pathing wasn't as smooth as it could have been. Because, like, every single time through, um, the pathing for this beginning area is different. Because uh, the, each Uruk spawns in a different spot, and it's not consistent on where they spawn. But we're going to use our Power of the Ring, which is uh, the big thing that is not in the main game. Uh, that is specifically meant for Celebrimbor. Since he is basically similar to Sauron and has uh, created rings himself. So the power of the ring gives us infinite executes, infinite arrows, and makes us just overpowered during the duration of it. So we're just going to charge and just mash that F key, mash the execute, and just beat up the guy as fast as we possibly can. And then we're going to use a cool mechanic there at the end called Wraith Flash, which can hit multiple enemies around me and uh, turn them to our side. And it's faster to use the Wraith Flash than it is to execute him and go through the animation of the execute. So we're going to use that to save us a bit of time. Now focus as we're transitioning to the next mission. If you want to do some donations, you can. Yeah, more than happy to. Uh, we still have a few um, incentives that I'd like to push again with Talkraiser's next run. Um, although these are still can be open during the duration of the run, I would really like it if we could try to meet vibing with the universe before then, because that still is the best four words I've ever seen anyone put into an incentive ever. Um, and note that I've just heard, I just had the incentive seeing you're the best around, as as I've just <laughs> experienced. Um, but yeah, so um, basically for those of you just tuning in, this is Midfall Speedball 2020. We are uh, in support of the White Bear Area Emergency Food Shelf. To donate, you can go to speedrun.com forward slash MFSB, there's the letters, 2020 forward slash donate, or type exclamation donate in chat. 
You can also apply to your donation to various bid wars and incentives, as just mentioned. And if you want to learn more about the White Bear Area Emergency Food Shelf, you can go to https colon forward slash forward slash whitebearfoodshelf.org. All right, and here we're getting into a section which combines all of our cool tricks of shadow branding, you know, teleporting to them and getting them, as well as the stealth mechanics of this game. Because the way this game plays, it's a mix of like Assassin's Creed and the uh, Arkham Asylum games for Batman. And like having the combat mechanics of the Batman games and having uh, the stealth mechanics of uh, Assassin's Creed. So it, it makes for some interesting gameplay. So here, we're having to do all of this while not being detected, by the way. So having to brand all of these Uruks and using the fast mobility of our shadow brand, as well as using our branding mechanic to gain more arrows, because it costs three arrows to shadow brand an enemy. And uh, every time we normal brand an enemy, it gives us back four. So while we're doing this, we're constantly um, branding normally, using stealth brands, or just walking up on them and branding them from behind, as well as using our uh, shadow brand and teleporting to them in order to keep a consistent amount of arrows to go through this area while not giving them any detection status. So as you can see, that area right there is fairly optimized on the pathing. Like, um, me and... I'm pretty much have solely done most of the pathing for this game. Uh, it was Zojali uh, X that actually did the first run of this game ever uh, for the Bright Lord DLC and was the one that kind of made me decide to actually give the DLC a try because uh, he did a couple runs of it and we wound up uh, competing for a bit until, uh, you know, he went on to do some other things. But, you know, just teleport down to him, use our power of the ring. We're going to bully Snagog the Diseased and just uh, punch him in the face a few times and just stab him with our sword. It's just, we don't like him. He's not our friend, and we just want him to, you know, become our property. So, um, with those, uh, the reason we do brand, like branding and set executes is because it's a little bit faster. And because it doesn't matter on those specific enemies, whether you kill them or you brand them. So, branding is one of the big, big, big mechanics uh, when it comes to the later half of the main game and for this DLC, because it turns the tide of the war versus Sauron, basically. And you have Uruks fighting for you, which is always a great thing. And the funniest thing is you get the power of the ring, and as, as I mentioned with uh, uh, Texas Warrior here when I was watching them uh, run yesterday, you basically use it as a means to say, hey, stop talking, I'm using an all-powerful ring, I just wanted to kill this one enemy and have no one else speak. Yeah, uh, you're basically just like, uh, because most of the time you're using it to, um, you know, quote-unquote speed run <laughs> the, the game and just ignore one specific, like, you just target on the one enemy that you care about and that you're needing to brand, and just have the other ones not pay attention to you. So you just say, shut up, y'all can't see me right now, and while well, I just beat up this one person. So this mission... So I will say this mission, is like when actually doing the run, is the biggest area for time loss in the entire run, uh, besides messing up the Sauron fight at the end. And that is simply because it is completely RNG dependent. So what I mean by that is... You have to brand and make Uruks fight each other. Well, here's the thing. There's no guarantee that they will want to fight each other. <laughs> so you have to brand them a pretty decent amount. Try and split it about 50-50. And then you just run off and have them fight. And you just hope that they keep fighting each other, keep killing each other, until 50 of them die by not your hand. Because if you kill any by your hand, it does not count towards your amount. Which is, can be a little bit tedious at times. You're mentioning as well, um, so the four minute, there's a, well, there's a lot of instances of timers in um, this DLC specifically, and there's a lot of um, sort of certain manipulations you do in order to actually use the timer in certain ways. Would you say like the four minute timer is fairly generous for this? Or uh, yes. It, like, unless you're, like, for speedrunning purposes, usually, like, my best time ever, I think I had, like, 2.30, but that was, like, perfect perfect rng usually i get it done closer to about 130 or two because uh there's a as i said there's a lot of variance that goes into it so i could 
be flawless on my end, just the Uruks are not uh, happy and not wanting to fight each other that day, so uh, they don't die. I mean, a lot of the timers, um, like this one specifically, is very generous. There's others that are mandatory wait times regardless. It doesn't, like, they're not for generosity's sake or um, really relevant. They're just wait times, essentially. So, as you'll see later in the run, uh, like, specifically the very next area after this one, regardless of how fast I am, I will still have to wait the full two minutes. So, basically during that time, I just kind of uh, make sure that people aren't getting into trouble, essentially. But right here, we're just gonna, you know, try and go over to right about here, try and get the RNG manipulation. We didn't quite get the one we wanted. So there's a, a standing there, it, you can get him to spawn on the other side of the wall right next to you, out in that courtyard. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get that one because it is a little bit more difficult to get. Uh, but we do get the other side here, so he is still relatively close by and makes it where we can get to him pretty quickly. And we're going to use that ring, as we said, to uh, tell him to shut up because we don't want him uh, speaking to us and using cutscenes and dialogue because you know, why, why do we want to listen to you talk? Uh, going to be a little bit... So hilarious. And getting that last hit at the last second had to use my M1 attack just... So he was supposed to go down there. We did enough damage to him. However, because I accidentally threw out that auto attack, um, he is going to stay standing for the time being. So we need to flip over him if the game will ever let us. He was just deciding just didn't want to flip over him. But just poke him in the butt and he's down. Uh, he was going to go down, but because I accidentally uh, threw out one extra attack, and he has that big old shield, he's able to block it and keep him sturdy on his feet and be like, nah, nah, we're going to stay here and bulk up. <laughs> we're not going down this time. And we do have a pretty long cutscene here. So um, let me just try and explain some of the mechanics, uh, specifically exclusive to the Bright Lord and kind of near the end of the main game. So what I'm doing a lot is what's called shadow branding. Uh, you know, as I said, teleporting to people and immediately branding them and making them become uh, a part of our crew. Now, each time you do this branding, it requires three arrows. If you look down at our bottom left, you can see the power of the ring, uh, which charges by brands, as well as uh, the arrows. So each time I'm um, using that shadow brand is costing me three arrows. And... Whenever you just normal brand people, you gain back four. Also, we are going to get the Karagor spawn here, so we are going to be able to teleport to this and make our uh, rotation a little bit faster. So, you use this a lot, uh, that Shadow Brand, and making sure that your arrows are good throughout the run in order to make sure that you can get to a lot of enemies and go through the missions smoothly. Because arrow management and management of your brands is probably the most important thing to for this DLC. So, they may return to the whoop. western shore as we stay here together. So, we're just gonna come in here, start shadow branding. Now, this is one of those areas where it's best if I can do the first two sections quickly because, in the end, it leads to a timer regardless. But the only downside to that is getting the time you want to brand these guys as fast as you possibly can to try and set up for that timer so no matter what we're going to have to have a two minute timer at the end so you want to try and brand both sides here as fast as humanly possible to try and get that timer on the screen as soon as you can that way you're not wasting near as much time so we should we'll have to go find one more guy after we get these two guys here because our brand oh Actually, this guy came up and decided to kettle us. So we are going to get a faster brand than I was expecting there because uh, I just got to a 20 hit streak, which makes it where the Wraith Flash that I just did 
which um, Wraith Flash can hit um, two in it, it gives can give you three stacks towards your hit combo, but can only brand up to two enemies at a time until it gets to uh, 20 hit streak. So we perfectly got to 20 as that guy got there, making it where we could get him as well whenever he came up to uh, come give us a hug. But right now, we're not really doing a whole lot. We're just trying to make sure that we're defending both sides. Pretty much as long as you're going back and forth, you're not going to lose the sides and lose the uh, trebuchet or the battering ram that you're trying to protect. So, just got to go back and forth, branding, killing, and maiming as many of the Uruks as possible. Just don't want them to, you know, take it down in the two-minute span that we have to sit around and wait. The only pain of this is there's a little archer right up here that can usually respawns a lot, which I don't even know how I branded him right now. I'm going to be completely honest because I did a Wraith Flash down here. I didn't go up to him like I normally have to if I want to get him, but he's the only way really that the battering ram can really die on this side and the trebuchet really can only die if you're not paying attention at all to the side, so... Fairly straightforward. So I'll use this time to kind of explain the mechanics. So as you see right there, I'm combat branding, which... <laughs> uh, so as you saw there, uh, if an Uruk takes a little bit too much damage and you go to brand an already branded Uruk, their head pops off on occasion. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was trying to combat brand him so I could get arrows back and continue uh, progressing forward. Now, I'm going to try and stand in just the right spot to get RNG manipulation so that the captain spawns on the same side as me and that way I can immediately activate the ring since this particular uh, boss um, it doesn't matter like how fast you kill him you'll still have to weigh out the entirety of the ring so we want to activate early and make sure that we beat him up as fast as possible now, there is a chance that he spawns on the other side of the map, uh, which is why the RNG manipulation is, like, really hard to get him to spawn on the same side, because otherwise you have to activate the ring and teleport to the other side. And when you Shadow Strike, Shadow Kill, or Shadow Brand, it slow. well, specifically everything except Shadow Brand, it slows down the progression of the ring a little bit, so it's a little bit slower. So luckily we do get that RNG manipulation. But the main mechanics are Flash Branding, combat branding and shadow branding uh the flash brand or the flash uh which we do a lot is that big aoe cone around us that hits all the enemies around us as i said can get us up to three procs on our combat streak can get us uh two uh uruks to our side except when we're at 20 hit streak or more and is really um and only gets us one arrow back, though. It's the only downside to it. So even though you're getting multiple um, Uruks to your side and turning them against the enemies, you're only really getting uh, one arrow back to continue your streak. Now, right here, usually we hope for a Karagor spawn, but it doesn't look like we're going to get it this time, so we just have to flat-out run. So there is an RNG chance for a Karagor to spawn here or up here. It makes it where this little road trip is a little bit faster since characters are 33% faster than you at your fastest, which is when you have Elven Swiftness. And I didn't exactly have Elven Swiftness during that area because there's not really any rocks or anything to jump over. But going back to the mechanics, uh, Flash Brain is really useful, uh, especially for this mission right here, because you're trying to brand as people as fast as possible. You don't really care about your arrows. So we're going to immediately use the Shadow Brand, use up all of our arrows instantly, try and get three guys on the team, and then uh, throw out some autos, Flash Brand before he can hit us, auto, auto, Flash Brand, and just keep up this chain until we get to 10 guys, and this is the only time we do this in the entire run, but there is a uh, f summon followers that we can do to summon Uruks to our side to help us. This is the only time in this run that we use it, and it's something that you can't do in the main game at all, but you only use it here because uh, it requires you to have that many people on your team. 
Now, this pesky archer is going to shoot that guy out from under my uh, shadow brand, which uh, makes it where I don't get the any of the rewards for branding him. So, but here, um, we're supposed to get to 15 guys as fast as poss humanly possible, and then just keep 10 alive for the entirety of this. So we're just right now we're stuck on a two-minute timer. So we're here. But we got to make sure that we're continually branding people and continually making sure that our boys don't die. Because if we get, ever go under 10 uh, boys, uh, we lose the mission and we'll have to reset this little uh, area here. And nobody wants to do that. Uh, we are going to have to acknowledge this Karagor because uh, Karagors can mess up our guys. Also, he's going to... He can mess up up too. Unfortunately. But we're just going around making sure we're good. Uh, there is a thing I could do right now. I could hit um, consume Uruk or and which will make the heads explode of uh, some of the guys around me. The only downside with doing that right now is it kills them so it heals me but it will kill my allies and i don't want to risk killing off too many of my guys so we're gonna avoid doing that right here <laughs> even though it is useful on some of the later missions to avoid going down and avoid making sure that you you know making sure you don't get killed because in the game you can go down up to three times and then uh after that you're perma dead uh, there is some things that can insta kill you anyways so we're just gonna walk over here to this little corner to have it where this to manipulate the rng to make it where the next captain spawns just to our left or right over there so this is the only spot that i have found to make it where he spawns not staring at you to where you can use the power of the ring and use the focus's uh little uh shut up command that he loves <laughs> yes my favorite <laughs> But just uh you know clean him up it doesn't matter if we execute him or brand him here it genuinely doesn't matter because we have to wait for the ring to wear off anyways so we're just gonna chill here wait for that all to go and Calibrimborg is another one of his uh famous speeches that he's uh given all throughout the run so we get to listen to him uh Talk to his new little Uruk army. So entertaining. So fun. I will flay your corpse and mount it for all mortals to see. Your skin will fly in the wind as a flag to your failure. And on to the next mission. And we're gonna, ooh, there's four guys there. Oh, no, there's just three. I can't count. But we're gonna hit the one in the back of that group. Um, we are gonna go for the berserker here because those guys can block our attacks and then smash us in the face, which we really don't want. So we're gonna get him first and then go after the archer and then uh, free our guys. So this is uh, servants and chains. This mission um, has the biggest variance of RNG, I would say, because well, second biggest behind Lawless Disorder. But the problem with uh, Servants and Chains is we can have random captain spawns here that are stronger Uruks that tend to give us a little bit more problems than most. And the problem with them is a lot of them are very strong and can take us down really, really quickly. Speak of the devil. We got Mugrish the Rat. He is a hunter, basically, and can throw stuff at us, which means we're going to use our own little guy here as a body blocker. So we are going to get him free. Luckily, the archers weren't too bad because there was two captains there, by the way. The other one, luckily, did not trigger the cutscene, but there was two captains there. 
little unfortunate, but we do squeak out of that really quickly. Considering there was two archer captains and I was stuck directly between them. So I had to kind of manipulate my uh, boy on the, uh, that I was unchaining to kind of face tank and body block for me. Cause you know, if he gets hit, that's fine. He'll survive it. If I get hit, can you not? <laughs> so we're gonna shoot these more guy flies and they kind of scare Uruks. They're scared of the flies. It freaks them out. They, they aren't having a good day. They're all running for their life. They're just terrified. So we're able to shoot those and have them just run away. Now here, I'm going to have to double back. Because uh, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, I did not have the full power of my ring. Which I really need for um, the Rogue fight coming up. I could have um, tried to shoot these more guy flies and get one of the feared guys. But it's a little bit safer if I uh, make sure that I'm going to have that ring power. Considering that Rook has three different spawn locations. One is back over there to the left. One is directly next to me to the right. And the other one is on the other side of the building to my right. So depending on where he spawns, uh, you might instantly need your ring. So it's always safer to make sure that I have it. Now we're just gonna run to the side here. Trying to make sure he doesn't see us. We are gonna pop it early. Also, Rug is my favorite because he's always so cranky, so angry, and he thinks that he's gonna eradicate us, but instead we're just gonna punch him in the face and bully him. And here, we're gonna use the flash brand to stun and knock back the uh, two other um, captains there to make sure that we don't get their dialogue as well and another one of his speeches so i just want to ask something really quick um uh mm -hmm. texas warrior how would you recommend um, people, if they're interested in getting into this game, how would you recommend basically having them start off? Uh, playing the main game and just experiencing it. Playing it through, leveling yourself up normally, and just experience the masterpiece that is the main game. Because honestly, like, I was not a speedrunner or cared about speedrunning at all. And then I played the main game here like of this game and i just fell in love with it it is just beautiful the cutscenes are gorgeous and as a whole the game is just spectacularly well made and like there is so many things about it that i wish that i could show like just the references throughout the game the levels are well crafted it's just a absolute masterpiece and i love this game with all my heart and if I was to have anyone, like, get into this game, I would highly recommend playing the uh, base game first before uh, even considering speedrunning it. But when it comes to speedrunning, I'd probably start on either... I'd probably start on the Bright Lord, which is what I'm doing right now, just because it does give you the full arsenal of what the game can offer plus the power of the ring. The only downside with uh, starting with this is um, if you do ever go to the main game, you will feel really, really lackluster because uh, you will not have any of your powers. You will just be a plain old Talion with uh, not many strengths until you start leveling up. So we're in a stealth area right now. Gotta go around, brand all the war chiefs here. Gotta make, and we gotta do this again without being detected, which is one of the major things in some of these areas. And also as well as in the main game, because it can be very hard to not get detected at times. Because there's even some stuff where you just accidentally get detected as of uh, unfortunate luck or weird spawn or whatever. Also, 
unlucky spawn here because he spawned above us. Usually he likes to spawn around the corner from us, directly oh, next no, to us, or up kid. on the bridge to our right. Him show. spawning up on the bridge Nobody is going to make it open. a little Bang difficult to get to him without many of the cutscenes triggering. So we have to think on the fly here. I think the best bet would be coming right up here. Oh, he jumped down to me. That's nice. Thank you, friend. Thank you, Skak. I appreciate you, homie. Good old Skak. Reliable old Skak. I know, right? He's just so generous. Uh, one of the funny things that you mentioned as well is in the main game... So you mentioned this game. This game is basically an RNG fiesta in a lot of places. Yes. And even in the main game, the, the names are randomized. Yes. Uh, so every single captain, every single war chief in the main game besides one... It, or two is randomized every single time so they're always different you are powerless to so now we go to one of the harder missions and one that requires a bit more thinking and probably the most obnoxious of the group of war chiefs for bright lord um it is a duo squad known as gorfell and tombhorn gorfell is a big beefy boy with a shield that doesn't uh you know enjoy company and tombhorn is a poison tipped archer that can unload three shots successively into your chest and instantly down you. So, all those war chiefs so far that we have branded, all three of them, well, they're on the execution block. Uh, Saw is a little mad at us right now. Uh, we're kind of stealing his Uruks from him, and he's not all too happy about it, to say the least. I mean, why would Sauron be mad that we're stealing his Uruks? I just don't get it, man. They signed up for this. Just because they were yours doesn't mean they're always yours. All right, and we get all of them, and we're immediately going to go for the archers instead of worrying about the guys on the ground because the archers will help, you know, help kill them. And also, all of our guys are fighting, so this is meant to try and save us a little bit of time as well. But we are going to have to come back down. Our boy's not getting the job done, just not fast enough. And I'm going to have to flip over this guy and hit him in the back so I can get those stacks and brand him. Okay. <laughs> But uh, now we got to wait for a nice little two minutes. We just kind of build up our um, passive here, build up our stacks, brand as many people as we can, and just kind of fight Uruks until uh, two more spawns. And this is the part where we just kind of flip around, make sure that no one's being too much of a nuisance, and really trying to set up on the other side of the bridge with two more spawns. Because as you can see, there's a wave of Uruks coming across the bridge right now. Oh, no. Oof. I did get lucky there. Uh, so I swung an attack at a Berserker. And because he was distracted with someone else, he did not block my attack there. So I do get to keep my hit streak, even though I uh, probably didn't deserve it. But Anyways, we're just going to keep slap, slap, and flash branding. Try and get everyone in this group... Uh, and we're going to start building upon, as I said, this group across the bridge here. Because we want to be able to get everyone on our side. That way, there's no enemies interrupting our fight with Tombhorn. Because if even one of our attacks gets body blocked in our fight with Tombhorn, it's going to be hard to kill him. And we might be forced to use the power of the ring, even though we don't want to. So I'm just trying to keep my heat hit streak alive, try and uh, bully my own Uruks. Just like you're on my side now, but like that doesn't mean I like you, sort of thing. So so we're just whizzing through. 
Now, we got a pretty big army, but that doesn't mean that uh, more archers or more enemies won't spawn over here in the next 15 seconds. The problem is, is they can also spawn after the Tomb Horn fight is started. So we have to worry about the potential of... them interfering which we are going to be in an awkward position to start this tomb horn fight and trying to calculate in my head whether it'd be safer to use the ring here or to just punch him i think i'm going to use the ring just so i can show y'all something i'm not going to activate the oh the soft lock even though yes i could from here but there's also too many enemies nearby so it's just safer and I can rebuild my power of the ring when going to Gorfell. Okay, so he's down. So right here, I'm going to take my hand off the keyboard because I don't want to do it. But if I was to mash spacebar right here and brand him before Gorfell spawns, the game would go into a soft lock state. And basically, it would never progress forward. Because it wouldn't register that I branded Torm, uh, Tombhorn. And it would say that I only have one of two branded for this section. And I would never be able to move forward in the game. And I'd be permanently softlocked. But now that Gorfell spawned, we can go ahead and uh, mash the button and go ahead and brand him. Yep, you're added to the team, man. You're a Pokemon now. Go, Tombhorn, attack! So we're going to try and build back up our ring before we go over to Gorfell. Now there is a RNG chance that um, our boys over there decide to down him our themselves. And, uh, you know, kill him, but eh, it's not looking likely right now. But there is a very small RNG chance that they take him out before I get there, which is always nice, but it's not consistent and it's very rare. I think I've only had it happen like three times throughout all of my run like 60 runs in this so it's not something you see oh, well you know speak of the devil and it, it shall appear apparently so they actually took him down not as fast as it would have been uh it would have been nice for but they do take him out we are going to try and get this roll off oh uh, unfortunately did we get it we did so even though we didn't get the roll off because we were able to pull up the map fast enough we were able to avoid sauron talking to us because you know again shut up we don't want to listen to you <laughs> so that saves about 30 seconds ignoring sauron there and now we're on the final fight of the game so this fight you can the ring of power and sauron the only way you can damage Sauron at all is to use the Ring of Power. So, we just need to charge at him and start slashing him in the face. Because, what else are we going to do? We have the Ring of Power as well, Sauron. We're equal to you now. What are you going to do about it besides let me smash? Alright, so we're going to get one more hit and then we're going to use our Shadow Brand to try and uh, get a brand right as we're coming out of power of the ring. That, that way we can save our arrows to continually uh, shadow brand people and set up for another power of the ring. Because in this fight, your power of the ring is the literally everything you need. Like if you do not have your power of the ring, you are going to have a rough time since you cannot kill him <laughs> otherwise. But we're gonna reactivate it, go back to slapping him in the face. And here's the thing, uh, and before originally when I first started doing this run, I thought I had to wait for the ring to wear out. No, I just slap him in the face with auto attack and we can uh, trigger phase two. So that is phase one of the Sauron fight. You uh, slap him around, you brand everyone, you slap him around some more. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Well, phase two isn't so simple. So everyone that we got on our team, he kind of made them his again so uh we need to run uh so we're right now we're trying to avoid tomb horn as much as possible because he can as i said pretty much insta kill us so we're trying to brand the archers up top and set up our hit combo oh that was 
weird. That was actually really interesting. So I had my mark on the other archer up top, but the game put me on the guy down below. Interesting uh, visual glitch. Also, we do waste a brand on Tombhorn, which doesn't help us because sure it gives us arrows back, but it doesn't uh, injure him or do anything. But we got our power of the ring. We need to focus down this poison tipped archer because if we don't, uh, the poison makes it where you cannot see counterattacks that you need. So this, we have to put him out of his misery first because he just can do so much to us. And we're gonna slap poor fell once because why not? We do get, oh, we didn't get the brand quite off. So we are gonna lose those arrows. Make it where we are gonna have to build one more hit combo in this fight. And we're going to try and avoid scat and uh, all of the boys as much as possible. Um, right now, we're just trying to build combo and get some unbranded Uruks to stare at. A lot of them grouping up on the captains, making it a little bit hard to just get them alone. But we are going to get a ring back. The next one, you see that little poison uh, shot that just went over my head? Well, you see... Room horn or uh, Rogue here. Our little buddy can also throw things at us. Messing up combos, messing us up, poisoning us, and all the such. So he has to die next to. It's nothing personal, just you kinda make this run difficult. And I'm looking for, you know, consistency, so you have to die. <laughs> So, we're just bobbing and weaving in and out of all of the guys as they're fighting. Our archers are shooting them from above, setting them on fire, and doing damage to them throughout this fight, making it where we don't have to do as much with the power of the ring. Uh, sometimes I've had it where they've completely killed uh, two of the war chiefs, which is very nice, but it doesn't happen as often. Also, I really should have targeted one of the guys with half health to see if I could maybe kill both of them with one power of the ring. But it looks like uh, that is not going to be the case here. Now, I'm probably going to use this explosive fire here to try and uh, finish these guys off. So I can shoot this fire and explode it. Now, I am going to unfortunately... Oh, I didn't get the cutscene because he hasn't died yet. There it is. So that does take longer than just executing them. But it means that I was able to do a lot of damage to uh, all three of them instead of uh, having to wait till I get another ring. And just trying to get more brands. They're both half, which is honestly really good. Uh, if I can just get one more guy. Like, I might be able to kill both of them with one power of the ring. The only uh, problem that might come into play is, you know, him being where we're there. You know what? No. And them not being friendly with my archers. Uh, as well as they're pretty separated right now, which makes going to make it a little bit hard to kill both of them, considering the long animation for this execute. That's actually a shorter animation than normal. Oh, we are going to be able to get both of them with this one power of the ring. So that is pretty good, actually. Now, this final fight. Now, we're on to the final phase for Sauron. So he's going to bring back the squad. Like, he, he is not done with them. He does not want them dead. He wants them to bully me. I don't want to be bullied, though. So we're just going to ignore them and keep branding Uruks. And whenever we can, we're going to use our power in the ring on Sauron. However, the first time that we use the power of the ring on Sauron, we are only going to hit him twice. Now, the reason we only hit him twice is because uh, the more damage he takes, the more guys he brings back. And we do not want him bringing back Tombhorn. Tombhorn bullies me and is rude and is not friendly to uh, us as a speedrunner. 
So we're only going to hit him twice. That way he gets the minimum amount of spawns. And if I am perfect um, and don't mess up any of my next ring of power, I can kill him with the next ring. So we're going to get just keep on about our branding. He's uh, a little cranky, bringing back some of the squad. Going to bring back, uh, I think that's Skak. So also you saw right there, I was trying to do, um, no, Skak's next to me. Which one's that? No, that's a cough. Cough. Uh, as you saw though, when I ever I hovered uh, one of my allies, uh, they kind of freaked out and their head exploded. Um, the same button that I used to shadow brand enemies. Uh, if I do that on allies, it kills them. So take that how you will. So as long as no one interferes with me and Sauron fighting, uh, I should be able to kill him here. As long as this uh, one Uru doesn't get in the way. All right. And Sauron will be going down with perfect cycling there. We are bound together. And time is going to be coming up as soon as I click the button on this quick time event. So time is coming up really quickly. I'm sorry I didn't get more advanced, but time. That was really good, Texas Warrior. Um, <sighs> Thank you. That's sub 46, by the way. Yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> 45-25. Yep, that's why I got on my end as well. <laughs> and here at the end of the Bright Lord DLC, uh, for anyone that wants to watch this while we're here, uh, is a little ending scene to see what Sauron does to Calibrimbor when he banishes him from death and ties into actually the beginning of the main game and where it starts. So, uh... Sauron ties up Calibrimbor and just waylays the crud out of him. Yeah, so, um, Texas Warrior, is there anything you'd like to say before uh, we head off here? Really, really well done, I want to say. For Just for reference, this is actually Texas Warrior's first marathon, and for your first marathon, that was excellent commentary. Well, thank excellent. you. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to say, though, before we uh, head off? Uh, I just want to say shout-out to Zojali, Kaiser, Rykon, Emerald Alley, and all the people in the Lord of the Rings uh, speedrunning Discord. Uh, Y'all have been tremendous help in, like, pushing me to actually do these runs and giving me a place that, like, I really just enjoy being. Um... <laughs> That's really so. sweet, honestly, Texas Warrior. Well, thank you so much. We're going to actually head off now to another intermission before our next game. Um, thank you so much. That was really excellent, and I'm glad more or less everything went pretty well. So, yeah, uh, give your applause to Texas Warrior for sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. I'm Texas Warrior 09 on Twitch, and I hope to see you all maybe sometime in the future. <laughs>